In this video, I've solved the exact questions in the October SAT four days before the test. In this video, we're gonna check how many of the questions that I predicted in the October predictions video was actually on the, on the October SAT, and we're gonna check some of the questions that I predicted and some of the ones that was on the October SAT. So if you're ready, let's get started. In the October SAT predictions, I've predicted 18 questions, and out of those, 10 questions were actually in the exam. This means more than half of the questions that we predicted was on the October SAT, plus three questions were repeated from the August predictions questions, and also one last question that I just posted in our community one day before the test was on the SAT the day after. If you were in the community, you were one of those lucky guys that, well, that solved this question that came up on the SAT. This is over 10 questions that you would have solved before even the exam started. If you don't want to miss the November, December SAT predictions, make sure you subscribe and join our community. Also, College Board may repeat these questions. As you see, like three questions from the August predictions were repeated in the October SAT. So make sure you do the August predictions, the October predictions for the next SATs as well. And also, I share some of the potential questions few days before the exam just in our community so if you want to join link in the description now let's check these questions one by one i've already solved my predicted questions in this video but i will go over the questions that was on the october city and check the similarities between them here is the first question that i predicted and here is the three different versions of this question that was on the october city check out the similarities only the numbers are different so let me know in the comments if you come up with this question on your SAT or not. I'll quickly solve one of these questions to show you the solution. For the positive quantities H, J and K, 35% of H is equivalent to 49% of J. Or 35% means 0.35 H is equal to 0.49 J. And also J is equivalent to 45% of K. So J is equal to 0.45 K. What percentage of K is H? That means I have to write H equals some percent of K. What percentage of K is H? H is equal to some percent of K. So I'm going to write H equals some, some K, right? So here I know that J is 0.45 K. So I'm going to substitute J to there. It's going to be 0.35 H equals 0.49 times 0.45 Okay, so what is 0 0.49 times 0 0.45? That's going to give us 0 0.49 times 0 0.45 is 0 0.2205. Now, divide this by 0 0.35 because we have 0 0.35H. So this divided by this divided by 0 0.35. 35 is going to give us 0.63. So this means H is 0.63 K. So H, 63% of a K is equal to H. Here is going to be 63. The next question that I predicted was a unit conversion question. And here is the four different versions of this question that were repeated on the October SAT. Let's quickly go over one of these questions. An object's speed is increasing at a rate of 1.1 meter per second square. What is the rate? What is this rate in miles per minute? Miles per minute squared. So we want to convert this meter per second square, 1.1 meter per second square into miles per minute square so what we're gonna do i multiply this by i want i want to convert meter to miles i'm gonna write meter down mile up now i put the numbers one mile is this many meters one mile is 1609 meters times another one let's just remove this here times another fraction this time i want to convert the second to minute i'm going to write the second square here minute square here now i know that one minute is 60 seconds one minute squared is going to be 60 squared seconds so it's going to be 60 squared here now what's going to be hap what's going to, what when we do the multiplication the units will cancel out meter with the meter we're going to have mile second square with the second square we're going to have minute squared here right so it will be converted into mile per minute squared and then we just need to do the uh, numbers uh, multiply multiplying the numbers so 1.1 times 60 squared 
divided by 1609. I'm going to put that here. 1.1 times 60 squared. Then the whole thing divided by 1609 gives us 2.46, which is the closest to the round to the nearest tenth is going to be 2.5, which is choice B. The next question that I've predicted was a data analysis question that had a random sample with an estimation and margin of error. And the answer was estimation plus minus the margin of error. And the, here is the three questions that, that came on the October SAT that was in the same structure. It had a sample, it was a margin of error and an estimation. And the answer is estimation plus minus uh, the margin of error. For example, in this question, the estimation is 10.83 ounces and the margin of error is 0.2. So the answer is the estimation plus minus the margin of error, 10.83 plus minus 0.2 is going to be at 0.2, you're going to get 11.3, subtract 0.2, you're going to get 10.63. So it's going to be between these, it's going to be choice A for this question. The next predicted question was this. And in October SAT, you had two of these questions in a word problem format. Let's go with the buffalo composition question, which many of you guys had problem with. The composition of an animal is defined as the muscles, bones, and fat of the animal. A scientist studied the composition of one young swan buffalo and determined the buffalo had 139.2 kilograms of muscle, which is approximately this many percent of its composition. Of the remaining composition of this buffalo, approximately this many, this much percent was bone, and the remainder was fat. Based on these approximations to the nearest tenth, how many kilograms of this buffalo composition was bone? So we're looking for the bone. All right, this buffalo has a total weight. From the total weight, 67.7% is muscle, which is 139.2. So if the total weight is X, 67.7% of X is going to be X times 0.677, which should be 139.2 so now i can find x by dividing both sides by 0.677 so i will go with decimals and say 139.2 divided by 0.677 it's going to give me 205.61 so this is the total weight of the buffalo and from the remaining composition of the remaining composition of this buffalo approximately this much so not the total but from the remaining 51 percent is bone so what is will be remain if this is the total weight i will just copy this here and then subtract the weight of the muscle which is 139.2 now this is the remaining from this remaining the 51.4 percent is bone so i'm looking for 51.4 percent of this which is going to be this time 0.514 gives me 34.136 now the question says round this to the nearest tenth if we round this to the nearest tenth we're gonna get 34.1 kilograms of bone for the uh, buffalo's composition this is gonna be the answer the next question that i've predicted was this question and in the video i said that a larger sample means a smaller margin of error a smaller sample means a larger margin of error and the question that was on the october city was this question let's check it out the question says a researcher is designing a study to investigate the average number of hours students at a high school spend reading per day the researcher is considering using a random sample of either 105 or 210 students from the high school which of the following would be the most likely effect of using the larger random of sample compared to the smaller random sample if you have a larger random sample the margin of error is going to be low smaller right the rat the reported margin of error would be lower it's going to be choice a next question was an angle question and here's the two questions that was on the october SAT. The question said a line intersects two parallel lines forming four acute angles and four obtuse angles. The measure of one of the acute angles is this, the sum of the measure of one of the acute angles and the three of the other acute obtuse angles is this, what is the value of W? So if we have two parallel lines and there is an intersection here, these four acute angles are equal and these four obtuse angles are equal, they are the same, right? So here it says the one acute angle is this and the sum of the measure of one acute angle and the three obtuse angles is going to be this so if this is negative 14x plus w is the sum of one acute plus three obtuse 
let's subtract acute from this because we know what is the acute angle. Subtract this and then we will have the sum of three obtuse angles and then we can divide it by three to get the sum of the, the measure of the one of the obtuse angles, right? So let's subtract negative 7x minus 6 on the 10. We're going to get negative 14x plus w minus 7x plus 6, 10. And then we will have negative 21x plus 610 plus w. This is the sum of three obtuse angles. Now, let's divide this by three to find out the sum, the measure of one obtuse angle. If we divide this by three, we will have negative 7x plus 6 over 10 divided by 3 plus w over 3. This is the measure of one obtuse angle. Now, um, what we can do, the, the, we know that one obtuse angle plus the other acute angle in this line, like this was the situation. This is the obtuse angle, this is the acute angle. Acute angle plus obtuse angle should be 180 degrees, right? So if we add this acute angle, with this obtuse angle, we have to set it equal to 180 degrees. So we can do that here. Let's just say negative 7x plus 610 over 3 plus w over 3 plus uh, 7x minus 610. We will, if we add them, we're gonna get 610 over 3. This negative 7x and 7x will cancel out. 610 over 3 plus w over 3 minus 610 and this should be equal to 180 all right i have this equation i can find this equation on desmos just go and write 610 over 3 plus rather than w we have to plug it x because we have to write it in terms of x so x over 3 then minus 610 should be equal to 180 right let's see where is the line all right, we found the line here. The value of W should be 1760. 1760 is gonna be the answer for this question. Next question that we got right was this question. In this question, you had to form two linear equations, one by using a slope and the point, and the second one by using two points. So you've used both of the knowledge to form a linear uh, equation. And here is the three versions of this question that came on the Octopus AT that you had to use uh, a slope and one point to form a linear equation. So if you solve this question, you would have 100% solved this question as these questions as well. The next two questions that I've predicted was this. The first step, you they give you the x-intercepts and you have to know the x-intercept form of the quadratic equation. And the second type, is they give you the vertex and you have to know the vertex form of the quadratic equation. And in the video, I told you that either one of these can be on the test. And on the Octopus AT, the x-intercept form was on the exam. You can watch the video for the solutions of these questions. The next question was a data analysis question that we had a sample of 86 plants that were between 2.8 to 6.2 kilograms. And we were adding a new plant to this 86 plants that had a weight of 11.7 kilograms. And we have learned that if you're adding a new data to a data set that is larger than the maximum value in that data set, the mean is going to increase. If you're adding a new data to a data set that is less than the minimum value in that data set, the mean will decrease. This question was in two different versions of Octopus AT. In the question, the histogram summarizes the data set of the weights in pounds of 14 salmons. If an additional weight of 85 pounds is added to the original data set to create a new data set of 15 weights of salmon, which of the following measures must be greater for the new data set than for the original data set? The mean, the median, which one? So check out the median. Here, how many data sets do we have? We have 14 salmons. So the, the median, of the 14 salmons is going to be between the 7th and 8th salmon, right? So 6, here is the frequency, the number of salmons. Here we have 3, then we have 6 here, so it's going to be 6 plus 3 is going to be 9. So here is like between 3 to 9 is here, right? And the median, we said, is 7 to 8, so it's the median is going to be here, right? And if we add another salmon, the median is going to be 8. And 8 is still again here, so median didn't change, right? So median is not changing, it's not going to be 1. The mean, 
What is the, the maximum value, the maximum pound weight of the salmon is 30 to 35. But we are adding a new data set, a new data to the data set that is 85 pounds. So the mean is going to be increased. So it's going to be just two, only two. The last predicted question was this, where you have to form a quadratic equation that models the height of an object. And in the October city, you had to again form a quadratic equation that was modeling the height of an object. Let's check the question. An object is launched into the air from ground level according to the a quadratic model. 2.1% after the object is launched, it reaches its maximum height. Let's just have a graph here. It starts from the ground level from zero and at 0.2.1 seconds, it has the maximum height of 70.56 feet. So here is 70. 0.56 feet. This is going to be our um, quadratic quadratic function, the model, where if which equ equation represents this model. All right, let's check out the equations here. What do we know about this? All right, this is the all the equations are in a vertex form, right? So the vertex form is a times x minus h plus k. H and K are the vertex of this. The vertex is 2.170.56. So the equation should have negative 2.1 here, negative 2.1, negative 2.1 here, and then plus 70.56, plus 70.56, plus 70.56. So it's not B and C. We have A or D. Now here, is negative 16 here is 16 this is a if a is negative the function is downward if a is positive the function is upward our function is downward so a have to be negative so it's going to be choice a now these questions were just from the october predictions questions these three questions repeated on the october SAT from the august predictions questions if you don't want to miss the november december predictions and ask your questions directly to me make sure you join our community where you can post your questions and study with like-minded students which has the link in the description so good luck on your SAT and see you in the next video